fabulous. Love how you do it. <laughs> fabulous. Fabulous blue bomber. Fabulous. Fabulous. The Fabulous Blue Bomber Show. On Shaw TV, brought to you by Moxie's. Now here are your hosts, Kim Babbage and Brody Jackson. Well, folks, Brody Jackson has a sad face on the Fabulous Blue Bomber Show this week. Why? My beer is empty. Look at that. There's nothing there. You know what's a sad statement? You have a problem when you turn a child's piggy bank into your beer receptacle. <laughs> That's when we know Brody's got a problem. Oh, this is the piggy bank. Oh, it I didn't is, even notice yeah. that. Look Shocking at that. you didn't oh, notice. Oh, you can put money in there. You certainly can. Oh, I didn't know. Folks, this is Brody Jackson from QX104 FM. I'm Kim Babbage. Rock and Rudy Gower's on camera. This is the fabulous Blue Bomber show on Shaw TV. What can I say? Uh, it's quiet around here. And it's kind of quiet in Bomberland. Well, it's not actually quiet at all. People are in an uproar about Buck. People are in an uproar in general. I kind of don't know what to say right now. It's kind of led to me having about nine of these. That's what it's done. <laughs> actually, nine piggy banks. Yeah. yeah nine is, well, I, uh, I mean, what what can you say other than the fact that it's this is the dog days of the season, yeah. you know? And and they're not mathematically out, so we can have that going for us. But I, when you get to this point of the year, when your team's kind of not doing everything that they're hoping that they can do, the best thing that That's you can do is That's a very diplomatic just, way to put it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the best thing you can do is just do what the team is doing. They're, they're fighting. They're trying yeah. to get into there. I mean, it's not like the last game was a blowout. It wasn't. Yeah. It, the guys fought. They had some fight to them. I think that we got to continue supporting them. That's what we should do. Well, we also have to find the good in all things. One good thing is that it's fall time, so you can wear awesome new Blue Bomber store items like we're wearing right now. You are wearing a child's hat. Which uh, how did it fit on my head? I think uh, I think I'm gonna own this child's hat after because I ripped it. I'm getting it sure. on your head, yes. <laughs> but look how fuzzy it is. Well, one of the other <laughs> funny things that most people who were at the game probably wouldn't have seen unless you were sitting sort of over here in section A and B. Um, we were sitting and watching the game and noticed a guy. Now, don't do this, please, people. Don't jump. Don't go across the field. You're not allowed to be there. You will be charged. Uh, that's all there is to it. People, other than players, aren't allowed to be on the field. Uh, but a dude jumped out of the stands, ran across the field, and he tackled one of the mascots, which it was kind of funny because I realized nobody really noticed what was going on because the play was in the, at the other end of the field. The TV cameras would not have been on that. The Jumbotron cameras weren't on it. I didn't think anybody had noticed, but luckily because somebody's always rolling on everything with their iPhone, somebody was rolling on the mascot getting tackled and it went onto YouTube. Poor mascot. I think that was my dad. <laughs> no, it wasn't dad. I'm just kidding, dad. You would never do that to Buzz. Yeah, I feel bad for Buzz, man. They got, those guys go through so much abuse. They work their butts off. It is a hard, thankless job being the mascot, and it's like 5,000 degrees inside those costumes. It is probably not a fun job, especially when you're getting tackled uh, and you're not expecting it. Well, I thought that only happened in Green Drop. Isn't Green Drop the one who's supposed to get beat yeah. up all the time, I not Buzz? I love the Green Drop guy. I kind of actually had always wished I could be the Green Drop guy for just one game. Play! Try it out. See what happens. I'll, I'll be Buzz and I'll, I'll tackle you. How does that work? I will call Jeffrey Bannon and I will ask him if I can be the Green Drop guy. Make this work. Make this work. <laughs> I want to tackle you. Anyway, don't be an idiot, people. Don't run across the field to try to do this yourself. Uh, but uh, it was just kind of amusing. Another amusing thing, um, well, I'll get to that in a second. First of all, we, we're going to do things a little differently this week. There are a couple of huge things coming up in Bomberland that actually affect the entire league uh, in the month of October and the beginning of November. One is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and two is the Hall of Fame weekend happening here in Winnipeg, and we're going to tell you more about those things coming up. Um, but we mentioned last week on the show that we were going to bring you the details uh, and a bunch of sights and sounds from the O-Line Dinner at 529 Wellington, which was one of the prizes and the experiential lottery and uh, it was awesome because we have tons of great shots and we'll show those in a minute but on Facebook Chris Greaves one of the offensive linemen he posted this fantastic photo of all of the guys on the O-line posing as though they were at the Last Supper with Glenn January and his long flowing hair in the middle as the number one man. <laughs> I love Glenn January. I love them all. Like, <laughs> and they actually posed it up like they actually, uh, I, somebody must have Googled it on their phone and they actually, they're all posing just like the actual painting of the Last Supper. Uh, very cool. Plus and about 300,000 pounds. Pounds extra, that's this. right. Yeah. But anyway, thanks to Chris Greaves for, Greaves for letting us use that picture. Uh, and he did say that he hoped nobody was offended, uh, but it was all in good spirits. Um, I should say one other thing uh, we're going to bring you is Glenn January and Kenny Maynard did a movie review for us and I wanted to play that this week because poor Kenny Maynard you saw of course when he picked up the fumble ran it in for a touchdown the guys on the defensive line don't often get an opportunity to score touchdowns there's Kenny one of our favorite blue bombers on the show this year and it gets called back 
Oh, I felt, it's disheartening. And I felt so bad for poor Kenny because he celebrated. I mean, he had the whole moment, right? He celebrated it up. TSN had him on the camera on the sideline. Like he got the full experience, and they took it away. But you know what? That's cool. That that just build up. That's anticipation for the next moment. I guess. The next moment will be even bigger. But and they'll think, not gonna take think that about away. how disappointing that would feel. Like you just went through the whole rigmarole, and ah, uh, sorry, Kenny didn't count. And in fact, it didn't count so much that it wasn't even on the stat sheet because um, it was reviewed, and then uh, like there was a challenge flag thrown etc so he didn't even make it onto the stat sheet it it's didn't like, exist it never just happened your dream being Poor ripped out Kenny. of your bare hands yeah right you know eh? you just can't do anything about it <laughs> anyway. you know what would make him feel better if he tackled buzz maybe give that one a try yeah right anyway <laughs> we're gonna give kenny a little tv time in lieu of a touchdown i know it's not the same but anyway uh there's that but first we are going to take a look at the offensive line dinner at 529 wellington hey uh, i'm justin Sorensen. uh we're here at uh 529 wellington steakhouse tonight for the o-line dinner Bunch of the guys showed up. It's going to be a good night. <laughs> Paul, Paul looks well dressed. He's got his uh, black suit with his uh, purple here. He looks very nice. I'm not sure about the Oakley sunglasses. It doesn't match so much, but he looks cute. Penser wearing jeans. Not sure if it cuts the bill, but he, he, he's okay. Boatman is Florida fresh over here. But in case you notice, he's got a fresh haircut. He's all lined up nice. Yeah. And Kolchuk with a black tie, black suit, blue shirt. It's, he could use a haircut. He didn't put enough gel in either. My friend here, Chris Greaves, the matching fedoras. Looks very sharp, new suit, sunglasses in the pocket, looking good. And of course, I obviously look very fresh because that's just standard, st standard, standard operating procedure. All right, well, time to eat. And let me tell, let me tell you, the offense line can eat. So let's head in. Hey, Paul Chuck, look how big this thing is. Huge. That's normal in our hands, though. Yeah, it's a normal, normal bottle of wine, right? Yeah. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Everybody else? Oh. I'm missing Andre. Let's more of these here. Oh, hi there. Hi. <laughs> hi, I'm Jeffrey Bannon, Director of Marketing for your Winnipeg Blue Bombers, and today we're at 529 for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers Scratch Lottery dinner with the offensive line and sitting around this table there's over 3,500 pounds of offensive linemen. 3,500 pounds of offensive linemen is going to equal one big check. I'm a little scared. So we were having a debate about which fork you use first and uh, the, the rules are always outside in. When I was back in college, they made us uh, the whole all the athletic legs go in that one night, and we did an etiquette dinner, and they showed us how to how to properly attend a nice meal. <laughs> and why is that? Is that because they assume none of you would know one? Well, let's face it, none of us did know it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Since Steve's gonna be tomorrow, he just got inducted into the St. Mary's Old Dogs Hall of Fame. What? Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, the rest of my teammates are still making their order. I'm going to find out if there's anything they really want to know about us. I actually, I don't have any questions. Since he's being bashful, I'll go ahead and answer the top three questions we get. Okay. Uh, number one, yes, we love Winnipeg, and, and this is a great community, and we really enjoy playing in front of our fans. Uh, Two, you know, we're a young team, but we're really pulling through a lot of difficult uh, situations that we've been faced with this season. And three, uh, not as many people wear jocks anymore. It's more spandex. So. What's been your favorite experience with Blue Bar? My favorite experience with Blue Bar has been being with these guys, actually being with this team. They brought me in here. It's been awesome. That's a real story. A real story? Treat me really well. It's been awesome. Oh my, <laughs> <laughs> my Twitter account and my Xbox Live account are the same. The Manuary. <laughs> wow.
Yeah. Danny, can I interrupt you for a second? I need to lean over your shoulder and ask you how many ounces of meat are on that plate in front of you and whether you actually think you're going to finish it. Man sized. How many ounces is man sized? Man sized. 28 ounces. Do you think you're actually going to finish all that? It's not a contest, Kim. You know what? If I don't finish it, I'm not paying for it. <laughs> I got the, uh, the offensive line, uh, the meat portion, and it uh, came to 242 ounces, which I think equates to around 15.12 pounds, with a grand total of, uh, you look at around $2,700, um, I think, after being said and done. And, and there's a couple of the beverages mixed in there as well. So that's, uh, that's basically it in a nutshell for you. Guys, thank you so much for the support this year. Uh, uh, we can't tell you how much it means to have the, the fans behind us this year and, and uh, continue to support us and, and uh, had a lot of fun with you all tonight. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. 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 One Minute With, brought to you by Winnipeg U-Drive and Payless Car Rental. We are going to spend one minute with Jim Bell to talk about a big, huge weekend happening here uh, in just a couple of weeks, the Hall of Fame weekend happening in Winnipeg. Give us all the details we need to know, Jim. Well, it is very, very exciting for us as a club to be hosting the uh, Canadian Football Hall of Fame weekend coming up uh, November 1st, 2nd and 3rd. And to go over the events very quickly, uh, all starts on Thursday, we have a poker derby. That, uh, and I should say, we have a fabulous sponsor, the presenting sponsor, Manitoba Lotteries. A lot of the events are going to be held at the uh, Casino McPhillips. And uh, Poker Derby, or I should say Poker Tournament, will okay. be held on Thursday night. There will be a breakfast on, on Friday morning. Of course, the gala dinner that, uh, that is a big part of, of the weekend will happen on Friday night at the Winnipeg Convention Centre. And then the Canadian Football Hall of Fame game will take place right here on Saturday against the November the 3rd against the Alouettes. So we're excited. We continue to, to work and, and plan with all the events. And uh, we hosted it in 2009. It's back here in Winnipeg. And uh, we're really, really happy it is. Well, there's, some, there's always big names being inducted. But some really big names this year, and one in particular that's important to all Bomber fans. And this is why you should be getting involved in this weekend. Well, thank you for mentioning that. Because we do. We have a fabulous class of inductees. Uh, including, I, I would like to uh, pay tribute to all of them. While we have a minute, we have the two two builders and Senator David Braley, uh, Peter Connellan, who had a fabulous career as a coach at the Canadian college level, Jack Abinchan, who has played uh, guard for Saskatchewan, broke my heart here in 1972 <laughs> with a field goal to you beat us to go to the You can't be old enough Cup. to remember that, Jim. I do, I do. <laughs> I think it was the last time I cried at a football game. And uh, Eric Lapointe, a tremendous Canadian football player, and then, of course, our own, the late uh, Tyrone Jones, and number 85, Milt Stegall. Milt Stegall, going to the Hall of Fame, everybody! <laughs> and it, uh, it'll be tremendous to have two of our own going in. Uh, we're very, very proud, as I know our fans of the, of the Bombers are. So that just adds to the, to the whole uh, three days of the weekend. So Okay, so um, now we know what's happening. If people want to get involved, what is the best way? What is the one thing they need to do? Obviously, they can go to BlueBombers.com, but yes. uh, what else should they do if they want to be involved in every bit of that weekend? Well, that would be the first place I'd advise them to go. Go to okay. BlueBombers.com. There's all kinds of information on there in terms of the events that we just talked about how to get tickets and be part of it uh, please if it's not if you you continue to have questions call our office at 784-2583 and we'll help you out with that but this is a real opportunity whether whether you want to go to the dinner whether you're a card player or want to be involved in the poker tournament on Thursday night uh, go to the breakfast. Oh, by the way, I think I failed to mention there's a bust unveiling. There's details of that. Nice. Uh, and, and it's a very, very special weekend. The, uh, the, the seven men that will be inducted to into the hall. I've been to several of these, and it's very, very proud and even emotional mm -hmm. uh, event for them. So 
Again, uh, Blue Bomber fans, it's it's back to Winnipeg, uh, the heartland of Canadian football, and we're very, very proud to have it. Well, and I will just say quickly to wrap up here, although, as you say, all seven men are so deserving of going into the hall, it's a huge honour, but as far as Milt going in, I mean, this is where he belongs. Best receiver ever to have played in the Canadian Football League. I know a couple of his records have now been broken, uh, but Milt will be forever in our hearts as the best ever, and uh, his place will in the Hall of Fame will solidify him as the best ever. So very exciting. You're going to want to be here. It will be emotional. Emotional, absolutely. Uh, Jim, thank you so much for this, and we're really looking forward to that weekend. Thank you very much. And just as, uh, as a football club and, and representing, um, uh, representing one of the clubs in the Canadian Football League to host these events is, is tremendous. And uh, we promise that we're going to put on a very, very good time for those that are interested in attending any of these events. All right, people, get out and support it. Thanks, Jim. Thank you very much. It's time now for the Rules Clinic. How are you doing? I'm Terrence Edwards. And this is Johnny Sears. And today we're going to focus on pass interference, something DB say they never do. Yeah, no pass interference here, man. Okay, number one rule as a wide receiver is we never let the DBs touch us. But their job is to redirect us in our routes and try to not let us get the ball. So me and Johnny today is going to show you some of the, the do's and don'ts. Okay, Johnny. The first thing we try to do here is I try to get away from John, whatever kind of move, he's going to press me, one hand or two hands. I try to escape, either way, either way, as it goes, he's going to run with me. Either way I break, John is going to be on my hip, and one of the things that we don't like, we don't like to be physical. DBs try to get physical with us, try to redirect us, and time, get a throw off, timing off. So, as we go, let's start over here, Johnny, front of the line of scrimmage. I beat Johnny, as I always do. I'm running down the field. If I make a route, a pass interference is Johnny grabbing me and stopping me from going to where I want to go. That's the rules Don't. of pass interference. And the do, you can grind them, force the issue, and so when he do break that way, we can lean into it and fall into the route. That's a do. One of the rules is, they say that DB has a space, that he can have this space. So if I'm running at Johnny, and he hits me, that's legal. The D, they say the DB has a space that he can control and I can't come in his space. If I do, he has the right to hit me. But if I come in his space and he hit me and the ball is in the air, that's a pass interference. But as long as it's not in the air, he has the right to hit me and do whatever he wants. Uh, what else we got there, Johnny? Um, how to play the ball in the air, okay? We got to just say we got a deep ball. I get outside of Johnny, we're jostling for a position. We running, we running. One thing that he can't do is pull me down here on my arm. They do it all the time. It don't get called, but it's illegal. It doesn't happen. That's a trick that the DBs do. So, as we running again, this is what he's trying to do. We all fighting. That's illegal all the way down the field. They will never call that. Never call that. But as you know, if the ball is incomplete, I'm going to get up and screen pass interference, and he's going to get up and waving, no completion. Don't leave out the push-off now. We got one more, the push-off. Every DB know about the push-off. As we running, running with Jocelyn, and the ball in the air, and I do that. Look, they would never call that, as you've seen before. Little trick of the trade for all your receivers out there. Notice, I didn't do this. I did this, called a chicken wing. That would never be called. But if I do this, a stand on Johnny, that should be called by letter of the law. It should. But we know sometimes it do, sometimes it don't. I miss it looking. Can and miss that's it. some of the rules of pass interference. The fabulous Blue Bomber Show steps up to the post. And they're off. At the 40, at the 30, at the 20, at the 10, it's a photo finish. That's your Assiniboia Downs Workhorse of the Week. So we've come off the field. We're in a store, actually. We're in the fabulous, you know, well, we call it the Blue Bomber store here, with yeah. the fabulous Alan Natchuk. Now, the reason that we're doing the work, workhorse of the week here is because, as you can see, we got the pink going on here. It's all in the name of Breast Cancer Research. Now, Alan, do you want to tell us a little bit here about uh, what you got the pink going for? All right, so it's third year we've done this now, a CFL-wide initiative, and at the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, we're actually going to be donating all proceeds from the sale of all this pink gear to the Keeping a Breast Foundation, which goes to Breast Cancer Research. Um, so we have a great selection of stuff we can wear in store. Uh, some of the stuff you'll actually see the players and coaches wearing on the field. Uh, always been a great success for us. We're lucky to have such good, passionate fans that want to buy and support this cause. 
Uh, biggest seller you'll see on game day is going to be people going around hawking toques, mitts, and scarves. So it's going to be cold. It'll be October. So please make sure you support and purchase one. Well, it's for a great cause, obviously. And if any, every, any guy goes like, oh, pink, I can't wear the pink. I can't do the pink. Uh, we've seen the size of these bombers. And they're all wearing, like, the pink gloves, right? Oh, most definitely. So, yeah, they can wear pink. So I think everyone can wear pink. Uh, it's for a good cause. So. And I must say that it brings out your eyes well, too. Thank you. The pink. It's for a great cause. Alan, thank you very much. The Workhorse of the Week is brought to you by Assiniboia Downs. Open year-round for horse racing, gaming, and dining. Go to asdowns.com for more information. Hello, people of Winnipeg. I'm Glenn January, and we're here with James and Kenny Maynard from your Winnipeg Blue Bombers. We're going to be talking about a very special movie, Coming to America. Halt! Kenny, why do you like this movie so much? It's funny. I, you put me on the spot. That's the movie guy. <laughs> he likes it because it makes him feel good. Take us to Queens at once. James, what's great about this? Well, I mean, uh, you know, it's uh, Arsenio Hall's, I think, big, really big role, I think. Bef well, it's talk show, of course, but mm -hmm. uh, Eddie Murphy and Arsenio Hall playing multiple characters well before the Nutty Professors and the Norbit. That's scientifically proved that you are suggesting my seat. That's not science. It is, it's just medical. I'm just taking it. Uh, by the way, I don't know if y'all have seen Arsenio Hall recently, but he looks like he's gotten 10 years younger. Yeah. I don't know. It's kind of weird. That's some good ass cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that good? Uh, uh, my favorite scene would probably be the soul glow, the stains uh, behind the couch. Uh, oh, just yeah, let yeah. your soul glow. Just <laughs> let it shine through us. Just let your soul glow. Just let it shine through. Just let your soul, baby, feel it all so smooth. Little snippet of the song. That's pretty good. <laughs> it's pretty close. I thought you heard the high note. Pretty accurate. Yeah. 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 You hit it. You hit it. No, you hit it. No. Um, <laughs> what, it wasn't the golden arches. It was the golden. McDonald's. Golden arcs. 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 Golden McDonald's. McDonald's. It's yeah. not McDonald's. Oh, it's McDowell's. McDowell's. Yes. McDowell's. Yeah. But I will say the a funny part when Samuel Jackson, he came in to rob the McDowell's. The boyfriend, I can't. What was the guy's name? The son from Soul Glow? Oh. The Prince of Soul Glow, we'll oh, yeah. call him that. <laughs> he got scared. Daryl. Daryl. Daryl, it was, yeah. Great job. Yeah, yeah. That's he what I'm hid, here for. He hid, and, and then the Prince of Zamunda. Eddie came through and he, he saved the day. It was beautiful. With a mop, if I remember yeah, correctly. He screwed the handle of yeah, the yeah. other mops yeah. while he was stealing his lady. Yeah. Uh, I think that, you know, the best part of that, about that movie would have to be just the life that he led before yeah. uh, he came to America with the, uh, the personal bathers and the, the, yeah. the, the walkway of roses. And James Earl Jones is a father. I mean, who doesn't, yeah. who doesn't want their father to be James Earl Jones? He can just go in Darth Vader voice whenever you get into trouble. <laughs> Let them wait! I'm talking to my son. I mean... Yeah. I will say, I will say, I would have loved the bathers myself. <laughs> Anyway, uh, <laughs> back to reality. That's why we're standing by the adult room. Uh, oh. Ah. oh, I didn't notice that. Uh, there's a lot of great cameo, like Daryl, the Prince of Soul Glow, Eric LaSalle from ER. Of course, who yeah. doesn't know that guy from that thing? In his face! In his face! Yes! In the face! And I think it is Eddie Murphy's funniest movie. Of course, yeah, he's uh, he's laid a few eggs recently, but he's on a comeback. <laughs> he's hosting saying? the Oscars. Is he? he is. Yes, he, he is. is. He is. He is. Uh, you know, I think that it's the best thing he's ever made outside of a fat suit. Mary, mother of God. <laughs> <laughs> but he does have the new movie with uh, what is it, Ben Stiller now? Is it a uh, uh, yes, oh, the tower heist? Yeah. And, it looks and the like, chick from Precious. He's, like, he's trying to. He's trying to <laughs> <laughs> inspired by the novel Push. Uh, that is. I mean, it looks like a heaping pile of smelly. I can't wait. Yeah, yeah I, I can't wait to not see that. <laughs> All right, well, uh, it, that's it. If you haven't seen it yet, uh, what's wrong with you? Yeah, you're missing a great laugh. 
All right, so ciao. Glow. Perhaps I should cut off my prince's luck. No. Yes. I'm not going to attempt the soul glow do song. It. Nope. I should get Rudy to do it because he does a pretty good yeah, job. Yeah, 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 but totally. I've got, we're pretty far away and he's shaking his head. Yeah. <laughs> Can I tell you a quick funny story? Yes. Uh, I had to go into Michael's craft store to buy some supplies for a segment I'm doing on Shaw TV. And as I was walking up, I saw a guy walking in. I'm like, gosh, that looks like Jonathan Hefney. What would Jonathan Hefney be doing in a craft store? No, it was Jonathan Hefney. He, uh, he was at the cash as I was walking in. He gave me a wave. I don't know what he was doing in there. Maybe. American. Maybe he's going to bedazzle a hat. Thanksgiving I weekend. I he's don't know. <laughs> making something for the middle, a centerpiece. Maybe. Maybe that's a, yeah. uh, yeah. a cornucopia. <laughs> yes, perhaps. I don't know. Anyway, I just we'll thought We'll find out funny. on Twitter of, in probably the next few days. Of all the places in the city, I'm going to run into Jonathan Hefney. It's in Michael's Craft Store. I'll ask him next week. We'll find out. <laughs> anyway, time uh, in the show for our giveaway. If you would like to answer our question and have the opportunity to win a gift card to the bomber store uh, you can tweet us the answer at fbbswpg you can email it to us at fabulous blue bomber show at shaw.ca or enter on our facebook page search fabulous blue bomber show and if you've won we will let you know so what is the question and there's like it's a two-parter because if you actually answer the bonus question we'll throw in a moxie's gift card as well oh my goodness okay so the first question is chad simpson where did he used to work before the whole football shenanigans mm -hmm. and the second part the bonus how many locations that's right Oh, that's a good one. You had to have really paid attention last week if you oh, want to get that one. I don't even know what happened last week. I'm not surprised considering you're carrying around a piggy bank as a beer bottle. I'm not shocked you don't know what's been happening. Um, folks, don't forget all of our fabulous Blue Bomber Show episodes are on Shaw Video On Demand. They're all up to date. So if you've got friends in Western Canada who are Bomber fans, just tell them to go on Shaw Video On Demand and they can see all of our episodes from this year. Uh, we're happy to bring you that on the Shaw Network. Anything else? I'm going to swear. Yeah, exactly. That's what I figured. Thanks a lot, Brody. And thank you, <laughs> folks, for tuning in. Uh, we'll see you right back here next week. See ya. <laughs> the Fabulous Blue Bomber Show on Shaw TV. To see past episodes or contact the show, visit us online at shaw.ca slash FBBS. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. Or email us at fabulousbluebombershow at shaw.ca. This is the part of the show where we do a minute with one beer bottle. So, Bear, I would like to know how delicious you were in my mouth. Exactly. Totally. Remember that time that we were at the bar and then you had the one with the head? Yeah. I need a nap. You want a nap? Let's go nap. <laughs>
Presenting the new logo of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Celebrating our proud past. Looking forward to our bright future.